Hello, I'm Adam Thompson, and in this presentation, we're going to talk about uh, the contiguous leads. So what are contiguous leads when it comes to 12-lead ECG interpretation? Well, you need to understand what contiguous leads are because a lot of the STEMI criteria or the criteria where you try to determine if somebody's having an acute myocardial infarction based on a 12-lead EKG requires certain findings in contiguous leads. And quite simply, contiguous leads are leads that look at the same area of the heart on a 12 lead EKG. So here's your typical 12 lead ECG format where you have uh, lead one over here in the top left corner, uh, and then underneath that leads two and three, and then next to that you have AVR, AVL, AVF. Collectively, these are called the uh, augmented leads, and then these are your limb leads. Uh, and then you have your precordial leads or your V leads, V1 through V6. Okay, so those are all of your leads on a traditional 12 lead ECG. Um, and then some of those leads look at the same area of the heart. When I say lead, just try to imagine it as a camera angle looking at the heart. So leads 1 AVL have very similar camera angles. They're both looking at the high lateral wall, okay, of the heart. And that's the high lateral wall is the left side of the heart, mostly the left ventricle. And if you notice that V5 and V6 have a similar color because they're also looking at the lateral wall, they're looking at a lower portion of that lateral wall, okay? Um, so all of those leads are considered contiguous to each other. Leads 1, AVL, V5, and V6. And then 2, 3, and AVF, you see that they all look at the inferior wall or the bottom of the heart which typically is mostly the right ventricle because of the way the heart sits in the chest. Okay, so 2, 3, and AVF all look up, okay? Their camera angle is looking up from your feet, basically, uh, looking directly at the bottom of that heart. V1 and V2 are both considered your septal leads. They're looking at the interventricular septum. The interventricular septum, which is the uh, area of the heart between the right and the left ventricles. And then V3 and V4 are both uh, looking at the anterior wall of that left ventricle. And you'll notice here AVR uh, doesn't truly have any contiguous leads. However, it will have a very similar angle of view uh, to V1. So a lot of times you'll see very similar shaped uh, QRS complex in AVR. But we don't truly consider it contiguous to anything. So here I've kind of put those same uh, labels on an actual 12 lead EKG. So you should probably do this if you have a 12 lead ECG tracing. If you don't, just find one and print it out. Um, and write directly on there, you know, the different areas of the heart. And one easy mnemonic that people use to try to remember is this. I see all leads. So I, the letter I for inferior, S and C for septal. And then you have the A and all for anterior and the L in leads for lateral, okay? So I see all leads. That might be a nice, easy way for you to remember all the different areas of the heart, but also I would highly recommend taking at least 112 EDKG and sort of writing directly on it the areas of the heart that it looks at. And why is that important? Well, here are those different areas that we're talking about. Now this uh, image of a heart is not kind of tilted how it is in your chest, so even though this arrow pointing to inferior doesn't look like the inferior side. This kind of looks like the inferior, but this is considered the apex. The heart sits tilted, so it sits tilted this way. Um, and that is, in fact, inferior wall right here. And that is your right ventricle right here. So uh, the inferior wall typically tells us about the right ventricle of the heart. And then you have your anterior wall. This is all considered the anterior wall, and that's mostly your left ventricle. Sorry. And then you have your septal wall, or septum, that's the interventricular septum. And then your lateral wall, again, this is the left ventricle over here. And again, why is that important? Because this tells us about the different areas of the heart being supplied blood flow by the different coronary arteries. Okay, so uh, obviously if one of these coronary arteries becomes obstructed, all of those areas that it, it supplies blood flow to Okay, it might become ischemic or injured uh, or infar infarcted. And uh, you, you will see that as changes in similar leads that look at that portion of the heart. So this area of the heart that I just identified, that's the, we you know, that's the anterior wall. 
right, anterior wall. So you would see those changes where? Which leads did we say were the contiguous leads? Or uh, if we we're talking about the inferior wall, where would we see those changes on a 12 EDCG that indicate uh, that there's ischemia, injury, or infarct to that area? Okay, well, again, uh, you want to know which coronary artery supplies blood flow to which area of the heart, all right? And that kind of gives you an idea of why we're looking at contiguous leads because occlusions to those coronary arteries will cause uh, patterns on a 12 EKG within those contiguous leads. Okay, so the right coronary artery, we said that does uh, supply blood flow to the inferior wall and a lot of the right ventricle and even the posterior wall in most people. The left circumflex uh, certainly handles a lot of the lateral wall. Uh, in, in anterior lateral wall, inferior lateral wall, posterior lateral wall, and in some people, very small population, the posterior wall. The left anterior descending artery provides a lot of blood flow to the anterior wall of the heart, the anterior septal, so your septum and your an anterior wall uh, definitely get blood flow from that LAD. That's a big, large uh, blood vessel. So let's quickly look at a couple of these 12 EKGs. Um, and identify those contiguous leads. So if you remember that I see all leads, I see all leads, that'll help you remember, okay? And if we just want to label it real quick, we have, these are inferior over here, two, three, and ABF. These are the inferior leads. And then we have S for septal, it's gonna be V1. Just quickly write that, V1 and V2. All right, and then A for anterior, that's going to be V3 and V4. And then L for lateral, V5. V, let's change colors here. Let's do V5, V6, leads 1, and AVL. And we're going to ignore AVR for now, okay? So looking at this, um, if I were to tell you that this pattern in V1 and V2 is indicative of an acute myocardial infarction, where would that infarction be? Well, you could see that leads V1 and V2 are both septal leads. So that would be a septal wall or septal infarct. Here's an anterior wall infarction. So where do you expect to see those changes? Well, Again, if we were to label it, we know that 2, 3, and AVF are all inferior. I'm just going to make the letter here. Uh, 1 and AVL are both lateral. V1 and V2 are septal. V3 and V4 are both anterior. And then V5 and V6 are also lateral. So if I were to tell you that these changes in V3 and V4 are indicative of acute myocardial infarction, you would say that's probably an anterior wall infarct. And we do have a little bit of changes in, in the septal wall, and a lot of times they do uh, go together. So you'll have an anterior septal infarct. And then finally, let's look at this lateral wall infarct, okay? Um, and then again, if we were to quickly label, we have our inferior wall, two, three, and AVF. High lateral is one AVL, and then low lateral is V5, V6. V1, V2, are, you know, are the, both the septal leads, V3, and V4 are anterior. And I do know, if you know anything about 12 leads, you, you probably recognize that there's a lot more to talk about in these 12 EKGs, but we're just talking about the contiguous leads for now, so I'm not gonna get too into that. All right, so leads one and AVL, uh, if I were to tell you that they both have signs of an acute infarction, where would you say that is? And you would say that's the lateral wall. To be more specific, that is the high lateral wall. And that's pretty much it when it comes to contiguous leads, understanding which leads look at the same area of the heart. Um, is important before you go on to try to interpret a 12 ECG for any signs of ischemia, injury, or infarct.